Hey everybody, welcome to McKellar Motivational Monday. Uh, my name is Danica McKellar, I'm an actress, math book author, and um, right now I am in Toronto shooting a movie for the Hallmark Channel. And I'm uh, simultaneously on Facebook Live and also Periscope. So, hey everybody, and thank you, by the way, for watching the Danny Cam. So I've been working a really long day and I'm so exhausted, but I'm really hoping that I will be coherent enough to be useful to you guys. Uh, ah, yes, temporary fellow Torontorian. That's how tired I am. I had to really think, did I even do that right? I think I did. Um, yeah, so I thought we would just talk a little bit about, in Buffalo, New York, um, but you know what, before we start talking, tell me, where are you guys watching from? I always love um, hearing where everyone's watching from because there's so many diverse places. Costa Rica, very cool. Phoenix, Albany, New York, Arkansas, Minnesota, nice. New Jersey, another Toronto, Oregon, a few of us here in Toronto, uh, Columbus, Ohio, Topeka, very cool, look at that. Dallas, Winnipeg, Sacramento, my goodness. Uh, Boston, I'm doing great. I'm just really tired, but really great. It's funny, Niagara Falls, that's not too far away. Uh, I, was, I was in Niagara Falls, I took Draco last weekend, not this past weekend, but last weekend. This past weekend, by the way, we went to, um, in downtown Toronto, they've got the most amazing aquarium and of course a science museum, and it was a lot of fun. I highly recommend the aquarium. They have sharks swimming like right over your head. I don't know, I, I'm still impressed. Kevin's bedroom. Yes, poor Niagara fell. You saw it on the Instagram? Yeah, I did some uh, Insta stories. In fact, so now Instagram allows you to do this carousel thing where I can post, I think, permanently um, uh, stories that I think are interesting or different or whatever. And so I have, and you have different categories. So I've got a category of Valentine's Gala, which is this movie I'm shooting. Also, um, I think I have one called Grateful or Gratitude. Uh, and then McKellar Math for my books. And um, and then one for mommyhood. I am doing a movie for homework right now. It's a Valentine's Day movie called Valentine's Gala. I'm getting ready for Christmas. I'm not quite there yet. Japan, oh, that's cool. Uh, why are we Why are we filming overnight? It's because we were shooting in this really cool location, um, uh, the botanical gardens, and they have glass walls, and so it was a gala. The gala happens at night. And so even though it was inside, you could still tell if it was day or night. So we had to shoot actual nights. But it's going to look so beautiful. I mean, this movie looks so beautiful. Everything is so pretty. It's just great. So anyway, so let's talk about avoiding arguments. Uh, every every Monday, we talk about something that's going to make our week better. Some, some way to just be better people and have more rewarding experiences and not get hung up on stupid stuff and live fuller, more healthy lives. So I just want to say a few things about arguments. First of all, how many of you guys have, this is a silly question, have more arguments than you really think you should? <laughs> how many of you guys think you're just like, if that was a stupid argument, why did I just have that argument? What did we just get out of that? You guys know what I'm talking about? Yes, you do. Yeah, totally, right? I mean, some <laughs> only in traffic. Vows of silence, that's not bad. Uh, <laughs> it's just some arguments you realize maybe they're they're productive somehow because you're getting stuff stuff worked out and some you're just like that didn't serve any purpose why why did we just have that argument it doesn't make any sense so you're going to communicate better yeah um, yeah you have them with yourself so what are your guys's favorite ways of avoiding arguments I heard uh, taking a vow of silence which you know, that can work, unless if the person is complaining about you not talking enough, and then you probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> meditation helps. Yes, meditation, and that's interesting. Well, sometimes you just got to tell how it is and be honest to people. Sometimes, but sometimes that can be dangerous, too. Uh, <laughs> arguing with sharks. Yeah, that doesn't help. Praying, meditating. Choose your battles, yes. Um, and, and you know, this is, um, we've tried silence, it didn't work. Oh, thank you, Brianna says, for my super heart. Yeah, you say, I'm not gonna argue with you. That's not bad. I think, 
one of the most important things is to remember that it takes two to start an argument. It really takes two. So when somebody says something to you, that, an inciting sentence, um, then you have a choice. We all have a choice about how we, re how we react to that person. You go to the gym, be the thermostat instead of the thermometer. Oh, I really like that. Be the thermostat instead of the thermometer. So somebody who's sort of checking the temperature instead of being the thing that gets really hot and angry. Uh, being honest can really be back tomorrow. Yeah, it's tricky because honesty is good, but it takes two to argue. And if you are reckless with your words, even if they're true, if you're reckless with them, you're probably not helping anyone. That's probably the time to write in your journal to say, you know, I need to step away from the conversation. Uh, if it's appropriate, to, if, it's a, if you're in a relationship with somebody or it's a family member, say, look, I love you, but I need to step away right now and gather your own thoughts. And then really do that. Really step away and gather your thoughts. Write it down. Figure out what really needs to be communicated, if anything. A lot of times we just want to hear ourselves talk and be validated within ourselves uh, to know that we're right to be feeling the way we're feeling. And you know what? You might be right to be feeling the way you're feeling, but you don't necessarily need the other person to tell you that, right? Hey, I feel people don't have to argue by providing you're right. I feel that's insecure. Yeah. Yep, stepping away whenever you can. Avoid arguments like you would rattlesnakes. Good idea, Josh. Oh, some Native American tribes sit down and talk about the other person's positive traits. That's interesting. You voice what you're grateful for. Hang on a second. Um, to block somebody for a second. Sorry about that, Facebook. Uh, how do I manage my time with being a mom and working on movies? It's not easy, but I was so grateful and lucky to have my son out here with me for most of it. Um, he went back to Los Angeles this morning, and I'm not here for that much longer. But it's 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 a puzzle. It's a juggling act. And I homeschool him, so it makes it a lot easier. Thank you. Yeah, talking out. Yeah, you know what? And really, again, remember, you can be the adult in the conversation or you can react. So it's really a choice. So remember that. Yes, picture the behavior you desire. You guys have really good advice. How many of you actually follow your own advice? I'm just curious. <laughs> or I should say, what percentage of the time do you find that you, you can successfully follow your own really great advice that you're giving here? What do you think? Reflecting on the argument the next day helps. Yeah, absolutely apologize when you're wrong. No brainer, absolutely. 50-50, 90%. That's great. One out of three, barely ever. Well, the important thing is to know, just to, to start is to know what to do and then to do your best to implement it whenever you can. Look, we're human beings, we're not perfect. You diffuse an argument by laughing at the ridiculous subject. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, maybe. Here, but here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, you know, humor is actually really important. If you can laugh at the absurdity of a situation, sometimes you can diffuse the whole thing. So even though that seemed kind of funny for a second, I think there's actually some really good advice in there. Uh, if you, you know, it's like, if you, um, if you, let's say you're arguing um, and somehow you start arguing about how often you guys argue. And you're like, you know, we argue too much. Then you can say, wait, we're arguing about arguing too much and laugh and like feel the absurdity and like let yourself laugh at it. And that could very well diffuse the whole thing, the absurdity. But remember, everything is, everything you say, try to say it with love. If you can, just try. So anyway, I hope that, um, Hope that helps. Yeah, you can't be too serious too much of the time. I definitely struggle with that, being serious. I'm just a serious-minded person. But, uh, well, okay, you, you don't want to laugh at the other person, and you want to make sure to include the other person in the laugh. Like, don't you think this is funny? Oh, my gosh, look at us. Look at what we're laughing about or what we're arguing about and then laugh about it. If you just, if you're like, oh, my gosh, you're so funny. Look at what you're doing right now and then laugh at them. That's not going to work. <laughs> It is not going to work. But if you share, if you can share the humor, you can say, oh my gosh, look at what we're doing right now. What are we doing? This is hilarious. Let's see. Say like, do you guys, do you see the humor in this? Oh my gosh, am I the only one or isn't this funny? 
and then you know follow it up with like something nice about the other person like the Native Americans do. Count to ten, you don't wish it good. There is too much anger in the world. We gotta do our part, you guys. So I hope those are some helpful tips. Um, any other questions you have, just random Q and A's about things? I am doing a Hallmark Movies IY Deaths. In fact, I'm up here right now in Toronto shooting a, a Valentine's Day movie. I almost said Christmas movie. My Christmas movie already came out and it keeps re-airing. It re-aired on Saturday and I'm sure it airs again soon. It's called Coming Home for Christmas with Neil Bledsoe and uh, a really, really fun movie. Really love it. And now I'm up here doing a Valentine's Day movie before Christmas. So I'm a little confused about what holiday it is. Oh my God, I can't cut my own hair. Are you kidding me? They would not, that would not be good. <laughs> you do when in closure. Well, you're probably not gonna get closure with the other person, but there are probably things you can do for yourself. Little ceremonies. Yeah, but you're not gonna get it from the other person. Life is too short to argue. It's true, but sometimes we do anyway. So just remember, it takes two to argue. It takes two. Don't be one of those two people. Yeah, the California wildfires are out of control, and I am, I, I'm not there, um, and we're not in the danger zone. Uh, but it's, I am so grateful for the firefighters. They are doing an amazing job. There's, I have to wonder how those fires got started. Um, again, I'm not able to watch the news as much as I would like to to keep up with all the details. But my prayers and thoughts, like a lot of us, are going to all the people who've been affected. And um, in gratitude going to the firefighters. What a huge job. I'm so grateful. Love of the Christmas Table. That was uh, my first Christmas movie that I ever did. It was actually on Lifetime back in 2013, 2012. Oh my gosh, one of those. Yeah. So, I'm again, uh, on again on Friday, I saw somebody say. Uh, coming home for Christmas. I missed the link and I missed the person, but thank you. Yes, I'm an actress, Jared. <laughs> you always argue with others about how arguing is a big, big waste of time, Jeffrey. That sounds like a really worthwhile argument, actually. Actually, that's pretty funny. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Remember, if you um, are interested, uh, mckellarmath.com is my website with my math books. And I'm doing a pre-order promotion autograph giveaway for 10 magic butterflies. If you go to mckellarmouth.com, you'll see how to, to how to enter. And just about everybody who enters wins because I just signed just a ton of our autographs. I just, like if you guys take the time to actually pre-order my book and follow the steps, then I want to reward that. <laughs> so I guarantee 20 winners per month, but it's, it's a lot more than that. So anyway, go check it out if you're interested. And uh, I can sign uh, an autograph sticker that goes in your copy of your book when you receive it. So, uh, and and uh, tons of other books at mckellarmath.com, not just 10 Magic Butterflies. I got books from ages 0 to 16, and they make great Christmas presents. I teach math, but I also teach the confidence that comes from feeling smart, and especially for girls, to know that being smart is cool and makes you better and more fabulous. And so... Uh, don't think of being good at math as something nerdy. Think of it as something that's going to put you on a path to success that will make you happier in the long run, no matter what kind of career you want to pursue. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. Remember, it takes two to argue. Don't start an argument. Don't let an argument fester and, and use humor whenever you can. And uh, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for your follows and your shares. And I will continue to do Insta stories on set so you can see behind the scenes at uh, my movie, Valentine's Gala. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching the Danicam. And thanks for being the D Squad. <laughs>